Hello there and welcome to my class learning Cisco's UCS. This is going to be more of an entry level class, entry level to intermediate. We're going to talk uh, about a lot of stuff, but first and foremost I want to introduce myself. My name is Jason Lund. I am a CCAE in both routing and switching and data center. I have been doing network engineering for a little over 10 years now. I uh, had a prior military background serving in the United States Army and got out of there, went to college. Uh, so again, I've been doing this quite a while. I've earned a couple certifications along the way, and I've got a ton of experience with Cisco UCS. I fell in love with UCS many, many years ago uh, when I was working for a Cisco reseller, and I kind of just learned the beauty of the unified computing system that Cisco put out uh, right about the, the same time that they came out with the Nexus platform is really when I started uh, getting into UCS again just fell in love with the ease of use and the flexibility of the system and hopefully throughout this class you'll kind of pick up on that and you will fall in love as well. Uh, throughout the course I urge you to use the Q&A section so if you have any questions feel free to ask in there. Uh, again if you have questions other people probably have questions so don't hesitate to put a put a you know any any question in there for that matter and I am pretty prompt to get in there and at least give you a reply I, I kind of say in, in one of the introductions somewhere that I know as techies you know being a techie myself I hate unanswered questions that's the kind of stuff that keeps us up at night so ask in there and I will respond as soon as I can you can also reach me uh, on Twitter homebrewed J Lund and brood is kind of spelled a little bit weird but you can hit me up. That's my Twitter handle. Feel free to reach out to me or follow me on there so that we can, you know, DM or, or whatever uh, means you want to communicate with me on. Now, throughout this class, what we're going to see, let me get my cursor over here. What we're going to see in terms of objective, objectives from my point of view is the first thing I want to do is introduce you to the components of Cisco UCS. And when I talk about the components of Cisco UCS, we're going to be talking about the fabric interconnects or what we call the FIs. We're going to be talking about the IO modules that are within the chassis as well as the different blades and then adapters that go in those blades. So we're going to talk about all of these different components. We're going to talk more about the newer components, not so much a lot of the Gen 1, but we will hit on the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 stuff. I want you to understand the components, be able to compare and contrast them, because as we go through this, what you're going to see is that as we put together different models of these components, that will give us different kind of architecture design guidelines that we'll either meet or we won't meet. Uh, for example, throughput to a, a particular blade. Well, depending on the, the I.O. module that you have and the adapters that you have in the blades, you're going to get a different amount of throughput to the actual blades themselves. So I want you guys to understand that and know how to walk through that design and configuration of those different components. Now, the, some of the other things that we're going to go through, uh, how the UCS connects to the northbound networks, and that's not just Ethernet, folks. That's going to be our LAN and SAN networks. So what you're going to see, again, as we progress through this class, is that we're going to have our, our fabric interconnects. So we'll have a, an FI called A, and then we'll have an FI that we call B. Now, these two guys are going to provide the connectivity for our chassis or chassis, because we can have up to 20 of these guys to one pair of fabric interconnects. But what I want to go through and talk about a little bit, let me erase some of this stuff. What I want to go through and talk about a little bit throughout this class, actually a lot more than a little bit, we'll talk about it quite a bit, is that we're going to have a LAN network. And then we could possibly have two different SAN networks. If you're following traditional SAN design methodologies, we could have a SAN A and a SAN B. And I want to talk about how we connect to these. Okay, so we're going to talk about how, you know, FIA may connect to SAN A, FIB may connect to SAN B. They both will hopefully connect to our LAN, but we could also have disjoint local area networks that we have to contend with as well. And we'll talk about those scenarios and we'll go through the configuration. Now, We'll go through 
pretty much soup to nuts the 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 configuration of these guys i will on a very live system go through and show you guys how to configure every component that i'm talking about so not only will this be a theory based class which we'll talk a lot about theory but my particular teaching style is i like to talk about theory and then immediately go into a demo whether it's in that that video depending on the 20 minute guideline that i have to kind of teach within We'll talk about the theory. Uh, for example, I may talk about disjoint layer two theory with regards to UCS, and then the very next video will be a disjoint layer two demo. And that's just kind of how I operate. Monkey see, monkey do, right? So we'll go through there and we'll talk about it and then we'll do it because we as engineers usually learn best by seeing it. So the next thing, that I kind of want as an objective is going to be, you know, what hopefully at the end of the class, if, if nothing else, you will understand what stateless computing is, uh, how it kind of pertains to the UCS system and how we achieve that with the UCS system. Because really the whole premise behind the unified computing system is that we're abstracting our, our servers from the physical hardware that they're running on, meaning we should be able to take our, our logical server and move it to any piece of hardware within our UCS system and it should be able to take advantage of that. Grant, granted, the, the hardware will have to have the right components to support it, but stateless computing is in essence what we're trying to achieve here. So we're gonna talk about those particular constructs which are gonna be different pools that will we'll create, policies, uh, you know, ha, ha, you know, the pools more being, you know, the identity of the server, the policies, how that server acts. So we're going to see how we abstract those from hardware. We're going to talk about the different templates that we can use to make our lives within UCS easier. And we're going to talk about service profiles. And service profiles, are th these guys are actually our logical servers. So as we go through this, everything's kind of building up. As we kind of come in and we create all of these different things here, all of that is in a buildup so that we can create these service profiles, which are our logical servers, which will overlay a particular piece of hardware that we have, okay? Mind you, whatever we've built uh, within our infrastructure, these logical servers are kind of going to overlay that physical hardware. And then we're going to talk about how to install the OS on that. And in particular, I'm going to be talking about how to install ESXi, which is a virtualization hypervisor. We will talk about that and I'll show you, uh, we'll do boot from SAN, we'll do boot from local disk. I'll show you guys how to do iSCSI and flex flash installs. So we'll go through all of that and hopefully by the end you'll have a good idea, one, of how stateless computing works. Uh, and then two, you'll actually know how to do it within UCS because you'll either have seen me do it and or done it yourself within the UCS platform emulator, which we'll also be talking about in an upcoming video. Now the last thing is UCS management. So I'm gonna show you guys some things like role-based access control, uh, organizations, locales, and just basic access methodologies and multi-tenant scenarios within the UCS system as a whole. So as we go through this course, I kinda of like to say we're gonna go through UCS from soup to nuts. We're gonna start, uh, again, at, from a pretense that you guys don't know anything about UCS. So if it seems sort of bland at the beginning, maybe you wanna jump forward a couple videos. Maybe there's a specific topic you're looking for. I've hopefully laid it out where it's gonna be very easy for you all to navigate uh, and, and you know pick and choose what you wanna learn or go through it from the, the very first video to the very last video. Uh, part, again, part of what I do is I try to make everything as easy and as simple as possible. And, and with that, that would be able, to, or sorry, that would be giving you guys the ability to go through that completely sequential. So from the first video to the last video, and that would be in the logical order in which, you know, if I were going to deploy a UCS system, that's pretty much the order that I would go through and do it, folks. So again, I, I look forward to taking this journey with you guys through this learning Cisco UCS class, and I hope you get as much from it as I did creating it, and look forward for future series for me as we go through maybe scripting UCS, as we go through advanced UCS scenarios in some upcoming video series that I will hopefully create and produce uh, on Udemy. So thank you guys for viewing and I hope you enjoy it.